the Sahara Desert, the largest hot desert on Earth. But what if I told you that beneath your feet lies something impossible? Something that challenges everything we thought we knew about human history. In 2023, using ground-penetrating radar and satellite imagery, scientists detected massive stone structures buried under hundreds of feet of sand, structures that are over 12,000 years old. That's older than the pyramids, older than Stonehenge, older than recorded history itself. And they shouldn't exist. Because 12,000 years ago, humans weren't supposed to be building cities. We were hunter-gatherers, nomads, or so we've been told. But the Sahara is about to reveal a secret it's been hiding since the last Ice Age. A secret that could rewrite the story of human civilization. Let's go back, way back, to a time when the Sahara wasn't a barren wasteland of shifting dunes and scorching heat. Picture this instead. Vast lakes sparkling under the sun, rivers cutting through lush grasslands, acacia trees providing shade for herds of elephants, giraffes, and hippopotamuses. Yes, hippos in the Sahara. This wasn't fantasy. This was reality. Between approximately 11,000 and 5,000 years ago, the Sahara experienced what scientists call the African Humid Period or the Green Sahara. During this time, monsoon patterns shifted northward, bringing heavy seasonal rains to North Africa. The region transformed into a savanna, teeming with life. Ancient rock art scattered throughout the desert, found in places like the Tassili Inager Plateau in Algeria and the Akakis Mountains in Libya, depicts this lost world in stunning detail. Paintings show people fishing, hunting, herding cattle, and living in communities. These aren't primitive stick figures. These are sophisticated artistic representations that demonstrate cultural complexity and organization. But here's where it gets truly fascinating. The latest archaeological evidence suggests that during this Green Sahara period, human populations didn't just survive, they thrived. They built settlements, developed agriculture, created pottery, and established trade networks. And some researchers believe they may have built something even more remarkable, actual cities with advanced architecture, long before the rise of ancient Egypt or Mesopotamia. Fast forward to the present day. In recent years, a revolution in archaeology has been unfolding, not in the field with shovels and brushes, but in laboratories with computers and satellite data. Technologies like LIDAR, light detection and ranging, synthetic aperture radar, and high-resolution satellite imagery have allowed scientists to literally see through sand, vegetation, and earth to detect buried structures invisible to the naked eye. In 2023, a team of researchers analyzing satellite data over the Central Sahara, in regions spanning southern Libya and northern Chad, identified a series of anomalies beneath the sand. These weren't random geological formations. They showed clear signs of geometric patterns, walls, buildings, roadways, and what appeared to be a planned urban layout. The structures covered an area of several square kilometers, suggesting a settlement of significant size and sophistication. Dr. Mahmoud Rashid, a geophysicist who worked on the initial scans, described the moment they realized what they were seeing. We were looking for ancient lake beds, trying to understand water distribution during the African humid period. Instead, we found right angles. Nature doesn't create right angles. Humans do. Ground-penetrating radar surveys confirm the findings. Buried beneath layers of sediment and sand, some as deep as 30 meters, were unmistakable signs of human construction. But dating these structures presented an extraordinary challenge and an even more extraordinary conclusion. Using a combination of optically stimulated luminescence dating, which determines when quartz grains in the sand were last exposed to sunlight, and analysis of the geological layers above the structures, researchers estimated the site was buried between 10,000 and 12,000 years ago. That places the construction of these structures in a time period that fundamentally challenges our understanding of human development. Let's talk about what we think we know about human history. According to the conventional archaeological timeline, the first true cities emerged around 5,000 to 6,000 years ago in Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt. Places like Uruk, Eridu, and later, the Great Pyramids of Giza. Before that, during the Neolithic period, humans were transitioning from nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyles to settled agricultural communities. And before that, in the period we're talking about, 12,000 years ago, 
humans were supposedly living in small bands, following animal herds, gathering plants, and sheltering in caves or simple temporary structures. The emergence of what we call civilization, with cities, writing, complex social hierarchies, monumental architecture, was thought to be a relatively recent development in human history, appearing only after agriculture allowed populations to grow and settle permanently. This is the narrative taught in every textbook, every university, every documentary. It's the foundation of how we understand our own development as a species. But what if it's wrong? What if civilization is older, much older, than we ever imagined? The structures beneath the Sahara suggest that somewhere around 12,000 years ago, during the African humid period, people weren't just surviving. They were building. They were organizing. They were creating urban centers that would later be swallowed by one of the harshest environments on Earth. Some archaeologists urge caution. Dr. Sarah Chun, an expert in Neolithic archaeology, points out that extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. We need excavation. We need artifacts. We need dating of the structures themselves, not just the sand around them. And she's right. Remote sensing can show us where to look, but it can't tell us everything. We need boots on the ground, careful excavation, and rigorous analysis. Yet other researchers see this as confirmation of a theory that's been building for years. That human civilization experienced a false start. A flowering of complex society during the Green Sahara period that was erased when the climate changed and the desert returned. Around 5,000 to 6,000 years ago, something dramatic happened. The monsoons that had watered the Sahara for thousands of years began to fail. Scientists believe this was caused by subtle shifts in Earth's orbital patterns, changes in solar radiation distribution, and feedback loops involving vegetation and atmospheric moisture. Whatever the cause, the effect was devastating. The Green Sahara began to die. Lakes evaporated. Rivers dried up. Grasslands turned to scrubland, and scrubland turned to sand. The transformation happened relatively quickly in geological terms, over just a few centuries. For the people living there, it would have been a slow-motion apocalypse. Generation by generation, the land that sustained them disappeared. Archaeological evidence shows a massive migration during this period. People moved south into sub-Saharan Africa, north toward the Mediterranean coast, and east toward the Nile Valley. Some researchers believe the arrival of these climate refugees in the Nile Valley may have contributed to the rise of ancient Egyptian civilization. They brought with them knowledge, skills, and perhaps memories of the sophisticated societies they'd left behind in the dying Sahara. But not everyone left. Some communities tried to stay, adapting to the increasingly harsh conditions, moving toward the remaining water sources, until finally, even those dried up. And their cities, their monuments, their entire civilization was buried beneath the advancing sand, preserved like a time capsule for over 100 centuries. So what exactly are we looking at? Based on the satellite and radar data, the buried structures include what appear to be large rectangular foundations suggesting multi-room buildings or possibly temples. These aren't simple huts. The walls show thickness and construction techniques that indicate permanence and engineering knowledge. Some structures measure over 50 meters in length, comparable to significant public buildings in later ancient civilizations. A network of pathways or roads connecting different areas of the settlement. The regularity and planning suggest urban design, not random development. There appears to be a central area with larger structures, possibly administrative or religious buildings, surrounded by smaller residential areas, a pattern consistent with organized cities throughout history evidence of defensive walls or boundary structures. While more research is needed, some of the radar signatures suggest fortifications, indicating the settlement may have needed protection either from rival groups or from wild animals. Possible water management systems. Some anomalies in the ground scans show linear features that researchers speculate could be irrigation channels or aqueducts designed to distribute water from nearby ancient lake beds or rivers. If confirmed, this would demonstrate remarkable hydraulic engineering capabilities. But perhaps the most intriguing findings are the largest structures at the site center. Their size and prominent position suggest they served an important communal function, possibly religious, possibly governmental. Some researchers have even speculated they could be early forms of pyramid-like monuments or ziggurats, 
though this remains highly controversial and unconfirmed. As with any discovery that challenges established narratives, the Sahara structures have their skeptics. Some archaeologists argue that what we're seeing in the satellite data could be natural geological formations, ancient shorelines, or erosion patterns that coincidentally resemble human construction. Others suggest the dating methods are flawed, and the structures might be much younger than claimed, falling into known historical periods. Dr. James Morrison, a geological surveyor, warns, radar can be tricky. What looks like a wall could be a rock layer. What looks like a building could be a collapsed lava tube or compressed sediment. Until we dig and see actual worked stone, pottery in context, and get direct carbon dates, we need to remain cautious. These are valid concerns. The history of archaeology is filled with supposed discoveries that turned out to be misinterpretations or hoaxes. Extraordinary claims do require extraordinary evidence. But the researchers who made the discovery counter that the patterns are too regular, too geometric, and too extensive to be natural. Dr. Rashid argues, we're not looking at one anomaly. We're looking at dozens of connected structures covering square kilometers, all showing characteristics consistent with human construction. The probability of natural formations creating this pattern is astronomically small. The debate is healthy. It's how science works. Skepticism drives researchers to gather better evidence, to test their hypotheses more rigorously, to consider alternative explanations. In the coming years, as excavations proceed and more data emerges, we'll get closer to definitive answers. Mounting a full-scale archaeological excavation in the Central Sahara is a monumental challenge. Beyond the environmental hazards, there are logistical nightmares. Equipment must be transported across hundreds of kilometers of roadless desert. Water, food, and fuel for the team must be carefully calculated and supplied. The remoteness means emergency medical help could be days away. Then there's the sheer volume of sand that must be removed. If structures are buried 30 meters deep, excavating even a small area requires moving thousands of tons of sand. Traditional archaeological techniques, which involve careful, slow excavation to preserve context, could take decades to expose even a fraction of the site. Some researchers propose using more aggressive techniques initially, mechanical excavation to reach the structures, then switching to traditional methods once artifacts are encountered. Others worry this approach could destroy crucial evidence. The debate over methodology is ongoing. Political and security concerns add another layer of complexity. Parts of the Sahara are controlled by different nations, some with unstable governments. Other areas see occasional conflict or are affected by armed groups. Securing permissions, ensuring team safety, and maintaining long-term access to the site requires diplomatic skill and sometimes luck. Despite these obstacles, plans are moving forward. International teams are collaborating, pooling resources and expertise. Private funding from foundations interested in archaeological discovery is supplementing limited government grants. The goal is to begin systematic excavation within the next few years, weather, politics, and funding permitting. Imagine the moment when archaeologists finally break through the sand and reach the structures themselves. What will they discover? The possibilities are both exciting and humbling. They might find evidence of early writing systems, symbols carved into stone that represent an unknown language, telling stories we can't yet read. Or perhaps the structures contain burial sites with grave goods that reveal beliefs about death and the afterlife. Jewelry, weapons, tools, all providing clues about daily life, status, and trade. There could be evidence of early metallurgy, copper, or even bronze objects that would push back the timeline of technological development in Africa, or granaries and storage facilities showing how these people managed food resources and planned for seasonal variations in availability. The architecture itself will tell us much. How were the stones shaped and transported? What construction techniques were used? Do the buildings show signs of multiple construction phases, suggesting the city grew and evolved over time? Are there decorative elements, sculptures, or carvings that reflect artistic traditions. And perhaps most exciting, there might be evidence of what ended this civilization. Did the structures show signs of gradual abandonment as water sources dried up? Or was there a more sudden catastrophe? Archaeological sites often preserve the final moments of human activity, meals half-eaten, tools left where they fell, 
doors closed for the last time. These frozen moments in time can be more powerful than any written history. The discovery of structures beneath the Sahara connects to a larger question that's been troubling archaeologists for decades. How much history have we lost? How many civilizations rose and fell before recorded history began, leaving little or no trace? We know that sea levels were much lower during the last ice age, exposing vast coastal plains that are now underwater. It's estimated that millions of square kilometers of land that humans inhabited for thousands of years are now beneath the ocean. If people built cities on these coastal plains, as they would have, since coasts provide abundant resources, those cities are now on the seafloor, beyond our reach. We know that natural disasters, floods, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, have destroyed countless settlements throughout history. We know that organic materials decay, that wood rots, that mud brick crumbles, that even stone eventually erodes. Most of what humans built has simply vanished. So when we say civilization began 5,000 years ago, we're really saying, this is when we start finding extensive written records and durable monuments that survive to the present day. But absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence. The Sahara structures are a reminder that sophisticated human societies may have existed long before we thought possible, in places we never thought to look, only to be erased by time and catastrophe. The Sahara Desert holds secrets. Beneath its endless dunes lie the remnants of worlds we've forgotten, civilizations that flourished when the desert was green and life was abundant. The discovery of structures over 12,000 years old challenges everything we think we know about human history and reminds us that our story is longer, stranger, and more complex than we imagined. As climate change accelerates in our own time, as we watch environmental systems shift and destabilize, the lesson of the Sahara becomes particularly relevant. The people who built those buried cities probably couldn't imagine their world ending. They adapted, innovated, and thrived in their green paradise. But when the rain stopped and the desert advanced, even their stone structures couldn't withstand the sand. In the coming years, as excavations proceed and more evidence emerges, we'll learn more about who these people were, what they built, and how they lived. We'll uncover their art, their tools, their stories. We'll add new chapters to the human story pushing our understanding of ourselves deeper into the past. But even now, before a single stone is uncovered, the Sahara has taught us something profound, that history is fragile, that civilizations can vanish, and that beneath our feet might lie answers to questions we haven't even thought to ask. The sand remembers. And now, finally, we have the tools to make it speak. The lost city beneath the Sahara isn't just an archaeological curiosity. It's a mirror showing us who we were, who we are, and perhaps, who we might become. Or who we might cease to be, if we don't listen to the warnings written in sand and stone. The desert keeps its secrets well, but one by one, those secrets are coming to light. And each revelation reminds us that we're part of a story much older and grander than we ever imagined. A story that's still being written in the shifting sands of time.